Hey there, students. So welcome. This is 13.3 and 13.4 today. I hope your math so far with area and perimeter has gone well. In this lesson, uh, I'm not going to require you to do the online Go Math part of it. I'm just going to have you watch this video. Uh, these two lessons are not... They're not directly um, in the core, which is what the state of Utah says I need to teach, but they are important lessons. But they're also lessons that tend to be tricky for students. They get conceptually, but then actually doing the steps they get lost in. So it's one that I would definitely want to have you side by side here for. So despite, uh, so what we'll be doing instead is um, I'm just going to, sh to, to expose you to the idea. So please watch the video and be thinking about it, but, but I'm not going to make you do math afterward for this. So in this one, in, so in life, and I mentioned this uh, like yesterday with my story about the sod and the shower, of it's very rare that we come up with a neat and perfect rectangle to measure. So this is an example of Greg's laying some carpet, and this is the shape that he gets. And there's a couple different ways for me to solve the area of this rectangle. So I know the lengths of each of the sides, but I can't just multiply 24 times 17 or 24 times 9 because you know, there's this, there's this space over here. It's not, it's not an exact rectangle. So the key with these combined rectangles is you're just going to divide the big weird shapes into smaller doable rectangles. So like I could take this big rectangle, this big weird shape and turn it into two smaller rectangles. So then I can see that I have a rectangle here and a rectangle here. So then to find the combined area would just be the area of rectangle A plus the area of rectangle B. So we could think of this smaller one as A and this bigger one as B. And so now this is where students get tricky is, okay, what are my dimensions? Uh, what are my base and height of this smaller rectangle? Some students will automatically say 24, but if I look at it, the 24 is actually from this point here to this point over here. So this smaller rectangle doesn't have a base of 8 feet, or sorry, of 24 feet. It actually has a base of 8 feet because I have the 8 here, and it's pointing to this arrow. This arrow is pointing to this length. So rectangle A has dimensions of 8 feet times 9 feet. We'll spread that out a little bit. And that equals 72 square feet. And then rectangle B over here, rectangle B over here, again, I can't use this 24 because this 24 goes from this point here to this point here. I need to find just how much this other this this bigger rectangle is, but not the giant huge shape. So if I notice this shape, I have a 16 that goes from here to here. So in this case, it is 16 feet by, and how tall is it? It's 17 feet. So to figure out um, how much that one is, I'd multiply 16 times 17 which equals 272 square feet. So to find the area of the combined shape, all I have to do is add the area of rectangle A, which was our smaller rectangle, which is 72, plus our bigger rectangle, which was 272, and that would equal, uh, what do I get, 344? Yep. And so that's how we do areas of combined rectangles. You're just, you're just going to break them up into smaller rectangles and then find the base and height of each of those smaller rectangles. Let me show you another example. Um, we're not going to do all three of these. We'll probably just do these two outside ones. So uh, with this first one that's dealing with millimeters, there's a couple different ways I can break up this um, I can break up the shape. I could go from there to there. I could go from there to there. And for this one, I'm, I'm actually just, I'm going to go across here. It doesn't really matter which one as long as you can figure out the dimensions. So find the way that's going to be easiest for you. So now I could think of this top box as being top box A and this bottom box as being box B. So if I add uh, the area, so it's going to be kind of the this, this, this same idea of the total area 
is going to be the area of uh, rectangle A plus the area of rectangle B. That's how I'm going to figure out the total area. So rectangle A. Rectangle A, if I take a look at this top one, it has a height of 3, and it has a length of, if I'm looking at this picture, it has a length of 12. So the area of rectangle A is 36 square millimeters. And if I look at the area of rectangle B, this one can get a little bit trickier. So the base and height on this one. I know it has a base of 6 because I can see that down here. This small one has a base of 6. Uh, so then I have two choices for the height of it. I could choose 9 or I could choose 6. The problem with 9 is that 9 is from here all the way up to this top one. So 9 is the measure of both boxes together, both lengths together. And I can't have that. It just has to be the smaller one. So I'm going to have to use the 6 here because this 6 is, is measuring you know, this length right here. So this one would be 6 times 6. And 6 times 6 we know is 36, and it's in square millimeters. So then to find the total area, what I would have to do is add the area of rectangle A plus rectangle B, which would be 36 plus 36, and that equals 72 millimeters squared. So that's how we solve those ones. We just break it up into two smaller boxes and then find the area of each smaller box and add them together. There also is another way where you can find the area of the whole shape and then subtract out the area of one of these gaps. So like if you were going to do that, you would do 12 times 9 to get 108. And then this blank area is it has a dimension of 6 by 6. So you could do 108 minus 36. If you see it that way, that's just a completely fine way to solve it as well. But generally, I find students like to be more additive and, and find the boxes and add them together. So this guy over here, let's get rid of this text box. And we'll lose. So this one I'm actually going to have to break into three boxes. So the total area is going to be the same thing as rectangle A plus rectangle B plus rectangle C. So to do that, let me get out my line tool again. Um, I, I, for this one, I could either break up into three boxes this way, but I'm actually going to do it um, this way. And then I'll use my line tool again. And again, the tricky thing with this is figuring out how much goes where. Um, so rectangle A. Let's have this little one up here be rectangle A. So I know right there that the base is four feet, and that's generally, there's generally usually one side that you can tell pretty easily. Now some students wanna say, oh, the height is eight feet, but it can't be eight feet because eight feet is both of those sides together. So I'm gonna to have to see if I can find a different measurement. So if this side's four, it looks like this four right here is pointing to this other side. So the area of rectangle A is going to be four times four, which is 16 square feet. Rectangle B, let's have rectangle B be this big one down here. Rectangle B has a length of 16 feet, and I've got to figure out how high it is. Now this one is tricky because there's no, there's no measurement that just goes from here to here that's listed, but we're going to have to do some subtraction. So I know from here to here is 8 feet. Let's use this other side over here. From here to here is 8 feet. But this side from here to here, from rectangle A, we already know rectangle A is 4 feet by 4 feet. So this side of rectangle A is 4 feet. So that means if this whole length is 8 feet, but this part of it is 4 feet, I know that the other length of it is going to be 4 feet. So that would be 8 feet of the whole length minus 4 feet of one part of it would leave me with the remainder, which is 4. So to find the area of that bottom, box B, rectangle B, would be 16 times 4, which is 64. Uh, I know that 15 times 4 is 60 because I think of it like it's on a clock. 
quarter past is is 15 minutes. There's four 15 minute chunks in an hour. So 15 times four is 60. Add on another four is 64 square feet. And then box C is this other one over here. And guess what? Box C is identical to box A. So box C has this base of four feet. And then I can't, this whole side is an eight, but the short side, the short length right here is four feet. So four feet times four feet equals 16 feet. So to figure out A plus B plus C, or to figure out the whole area, I would do 16 plus 64 plus 16, and that equals, well, 16 and 16 is 32, and if I add that to 64, it equals 96 feet squared. So that's all I'm going to talk about with combined rectangles. The main thing is just to break it up into smaller boxes and then figure out the area of each smaller box and add it together. The next one is missing sides. This one can kind of get tricky for students because it's, it's having us think about our formulas that we know. Um, it's a little bit algebraic, uh, which is good for us to encounter, but you know, I'm, we'll just kind of practice a little bit. So with this one, I, it says that this whole, I've got a shape here. It's three feet tall, but I don't know how long it is. However, I know that the total area is 36 feet. So if we think about our formula for area, I know my area is same thing as base times height is how I calculate area. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to rewrite the formula, but I'm going to rewrite the formula with the numbers that I know. So I know the total area. The total area is 36. It says that here in the question. The total area is 36 square feet. I don't know the base, so I'm going to put a question mark for the base because that's the side I don't know. But I do know the height, which is 3. So then with this one, I just need to think about, okay, 3 times what number equals 36? Well, that one's pretty simple. 3 times 12 equals 36. So this missing length right here, I know is going to be... 12 feet. And it's not feet squared because it's not the area, it's just this length right here. And how I did that is I listed my formula for area, area equals base times height, and then I just rewrote it using the numbers that I know of 36 equals, because that's the total area, a question mark of a side I didn't know, and then 3 for a side I did know. Uh, you could also, rather than doing 3 times blank equals 36, you could also just use the inverse of multiplication, which is division, and do 36 divided by 3 equals 12. Either way works. But um, area tends to go a little bit more simple for students because um, you just have to multiply by a number. Uh, let's try another few problems. So these are also taken straight from your math book. The perimeter ones can get real sticky real fast, but it's actually not that bad. We just kind of have to think about it in a step-by-step -step matter. So with this one, if you remember, perimeter equals 2 times length plus 2 times width, or you know, length plus a length plus a side plus a side, whichever way you want to think about it works. So in this case, uh, I'm going to have to fill in some additional information. So if this bottom side is 12, I automatically know that the top side uh, is 12 centimeters as well. Um, I know this top side is 12 centimeters. I don't know what these two sides are, but I know the total perimeter or the length of all the sides is, is 44. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite my formula um, using the sides that I know. So 44 equals twice times the length. Do I know my length? Yes, I do, it's 12. So 44 equals two times 12 plus, 2 times the width. I don't know what the width is. That's what I'm trying to figure out. So then I can, I can combine some like terms. Where I can figure out a little bit more of this. I know that 44 is the same as, well, 2 times 12 equals 24 plus 2, 2 times the width. So in this one, all I did was just multiply the 2 times the 12. So the next thing I have to do is I'm actually going to subtract this 44 minus the 24 
the reason I'm going to do that is I know the length of these two sides. And so what I can do is I can subtract that to figure out there's a remaining amount left over that I have to figure out is for the width. So um, I could do 44 minus 24, and that equals, uh, you know, what's that, 20? So 20 is not my answer. 20 is the amount of two of both widths combined. Uh, the, if I took the two widths combined and, and added it together, it equal 20. And I know that each width is the exact same length. So even though 20 is the size of two widths, I would take 20 and I would divide it by 2. Because I'm going to take that width and cut it in half, and that equals 10. So this, um, the side is 10 centimeters. And then this other side, too, is 10 centimeters. So 10 plus 12 plus 10 plus 12 is going to equal 44. Now, the perimeter ones are really tricky because, I mean, frankly, this is, this is pre-algebra type stuff here. Um, but another way you could think about it is if we weren't thinking about it this way, you could think about it as, you know, perimeter equals um, length plus length plus width plus width. And so then my 44 is my perimeter is the same thing as 12 plus 12 plus width plus width. So then these two 12s equals a 24, um, which means I would have to do the 44 minus the 24 again, which would mean I have 20 is the same thing as if I added both of my widths together. So then I just cut the 20 in half. 20 divided by 2 equals 10. Those are tricky. Um, so I just wanted to show you the perimeter problems just so that we're kind of aware of it. Um, here's the area. So again, the area ones I like a little, they're just a little bit slicker. But area is equal to base times height. So I'm going to include, rewrite my formula, but with um, the numbers I know put in. So 108 equals 9 times a number. So then I have to think of, well, 9 times what equals 108? Or I could think of 108 divided by 9 equals what number? And the answer is 12. So the answer for that one is 12 inches. And if I um, check my work, Uh, 12 times 9, multiply the base times the height, does indeed end up equaling 108 square inches. This last one we'll do here is 5 meters on one side. I don't know the length of the other side, but I do know the total area is 90. So area is 90 is the same thing as a number, which is the base, times my height, which is 5. So the way I can think about it is 90 times what number? 90 times blank, or sorry, 5 times blank equals 90. Um, so I know from my basic, I just have learned over time that 5 times 20 equals 100. So then minus 5 minus 5, 5 times 18 um, equals 90. Or you could also do 90 divided by 5. But that means this length here um, is 18. So thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, I just wanted to expose you to a couple other different ways to think about area and perimeter. Uh, you do not need to um, do the goal math online or complete a quiz for this lesson. You'll just need to just respond below and say, hey, Mr. D, I watched the video, and you'll receive credit for this one. So thanks so much for watching. Keep working hard.